Welcome to NABTRADE's breakdown of Federal Budget 2023. Tonight, the Labor government has announced a slender surplus, the first in more than a decade, and a range of measures primarily aimed at lowering the cost of living or improving welfare for those in difficult circumstances. No changes were announced at all to personal taxation apart from the annual indexation of the Medicare levy threshold, which ensures that low-income individuals continue to be exempt from paying the Medicare levy. This takes the family threshold above $40,000 for the first time to $40,933 plus $3,760 for each dependent child and the seniors threshold to $53,406 while the single threshold increases to $24,200. As previously announced, low-income households will receive relief in the form of a deduction of up to $500 from their power bills from the 1st of July 2023. Eligible small businesses will receive a deduction of up to $650. Those on JobSeeker will receive an increase in their payments of $40 a fortnight from 20 September this year, while those over 55 on JobSeeker will receive an increase of $92.10 a fortnight, which is currently reserved for those over the age of 60. Also in September, eligible single parents will receive a single rate of parenting payment until their youngest child turns 14. That's currently only available until that child is eight years old. The current base rate payment of parenting payment is $922.10 per fortnight for a single person, which compares to the job seeker payment base rate of $745.20. Single parents moving to the parenting payment will also benefit from more generous earning arrangements compared to job seeker. Eligible single parents with one child will be able to earn an extra $569.10 a fortnight plus an extra $24.60 per additional child before their payment stops altogether. The maximum rates of Commonwealth rent assistance will also increase by 15%, a measure that will really assist a wide range of Social Security recipients. As previously announced, eligibility for the First Home Guarantee and the Regional First Home Guarantee will be expanded to any two individual or eligible borrowers beyond married and de facto couples and non-first home buyers who haven't owned a property in Australia in the preceding 10 years. Australian permanent residents, in addition to Australian citizens, will also be eligible for the Home Guarantee Scheme. This is the scheme that allows aspiring homeowners to buy a home with a deposit as low as 5% without paying lenders mortgage insurance. For existing homeowners, an extensive range of energy saving initiatives such as electrification, energy saving appliances and solar panels will be eligible for low rate loans. From 1 July this year, parental leave pay and dad and partner pay will combine to a single 20-week payment. A new family income test of $350,000 per annum will see nearly 3,000 additional parents become eligible for the entitlement each year. The government has also committed to increase paid parental leave to 26 weeks by 2026. At the other end of the scale, very high superannuation balances will attract a higher rate of tax from the 1st of July 2025. Earnings on balances exceeding $3 million will pay tax on earnings at a rate of 30%, 15% higher than the current rate of 15%. Earnings on balances below $3 million will continue to be taxed at the concessional rate of 15%. Defined benefit interests, if you have one, will be appropriately valued and will have earnings taxed under this measure in a similar way to other interests to ensure commensurate treatment. Also in superannuation, employers will be required to pay super contributions at the same time as wages, but from the 1st of July 2026 in a measure designed to increase compliance with super legislation. For investors, really the two big categories were interestingly close to those getting a lot of attention offshore. Huge investments in renewable energy and decarbonisation and the implementation of a global and domestic minimum tax rate of 15%, which has been an OECD focus to reduce incentives for international tax arbitrage. 
It's worth noting that all of these measures will need to be drafted and passed through both Houses of Parliament before taking effect, so you don't need to be concerned about any effect immediately. If you'd like to find out about how tonight's budget could affect your business or your industry, go to nab.com.au slash federal budget.